Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is January 9th, 29th, 2019, and this is our episode number 420. Today we're coming back to QGEP, que Heróis Galvão, Exploração e Produção. We did do a, one episode on it, uh, 419, and we're following up here because we wanted to know something that's missing here, and that is the free cash flow history. To sum it up, uh, Queiroz Galvão, Exploração e Produção, shows a fundamentally sound uh, set of finances, low debt, very low liabilities to equity, even like surprisingly low, so that's something to really understand. They seem to have been posting profits year in and year out. The multiple itself uh, isn't uh, on the clear bargain side here. But we spoke about oil companies showing earnings, but not free cash flows, and that this may be a a flag to 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 bear, to witness. So uh, we do have numbers all the way back to 2015. So our goal here is to go all the way back to 20 2009. So, let's see. Yep, so free cash flow, maybe 2019. So here we'll have three years. Uh, and free cash flow, the way we do it, we take operating cash flow. And we typically we deduct investment cash flow. So three forty eight minus six seventeen minus two six nine. So here we see a very different picture over the last five years from the earnings, and this is the point very much so but onwards. For 2013, we have an operating cash flow of 376 and an investment cash flow of minus of yeah, minus a billion 36 minus 660. In 2012, we have an operating cash flow of 254 and an investment cash flow of minus 263. Minus 9. Now we can go on, and I need to insert another row here below. Maybe there is no, there aren't results for 2009, if I rem remember well. doesn't show here but we'll see so for for 2011 194 minus 607 minus 414 uh, 2010 operating cash flow 90 and Investment cash flow minus 79, so 11. And I'll triple check here. If uh, <clears throat> 2010 brings with itself numbers from 2009, but no, it doesn't. So let me delete this row. So there are two things here. First, let's just take the average here. So 
So on average, this is before adjusting for inflation, but uh, the free cash flow per year is minus 91. Let me adjust this. I had forgotten to adjust. So the multiple here has improved for earnings to 15.92. Still nothing like a huge bargain, but okay. So this is this. I'm just adjusting for inflation now. I have a lot of macros and short cuts here. Nothing too rocket sciencey, but it's helpful. All right, so after adjusting for inflation, on average, uh, the free cash was minus 142. So there are two things, as I said. First is the relative youth of the company. So even using projections for 2018, we only have nine years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Uh, we typically demand at the very least 10. And yeah, nine's close to 10. But we would love the, for the company to have a much longer history than 10 years. The reason being, you have a larger sample size, the company is more encroached, is more set, is easier to understand, even if this means at the end of the day saying no to it, but at least you have more information. Uh, yes, this precludes uh, investing pretty much every growth company and that's part of the strategy that's part of the choice set here um, this is value investing you must ascertain that there's real value there okay so yeah you know no Facebook's here uh, and, and so forth uh, so we pay the price but we believe that in aggregate, this is this is good. Uh, so yeah, it, this does not mean that I wouldn't ever invest in a company that only has nine years, but these numbers would have to be better than numbers offered by a company with with a longer history, and they would have to be significantly better. They would have to be thirty to fifty percent better. To, to give us a margin of safety or the growth would have to seem incredibly trustworthy for the next 10 years so that's that and now you know if you look at the free cash flow here this may be a coincidence this may not be a coincidence by but, but I mentioned in the last episode uh, not in Brazil but in the United States the book Saudi America by Bethany McLean uh, and she wrote the book on Enron, A Fraud. Uh, but in this new book called Saudi America, she mentions the, the sheer lack of free cash flow, of cash flow of oil production companies in the United States, namely in uh, fracking. Now, QGEP does not do fracking as, as best as I know. But it's an oil company, and regardless of of the the particulars in this case, um, earnings are expected units of currency uh, entering your coffer. Free cash flow are is actual units of currency having entered your coffer so it's more like money in the bank earnings uh, accounting wise can and typically in fact are um, projections so if you have great information and if you have strong reason to believe that these earnings will will be uh, materialized in the future awesome and if you want to leave a comment in the video explaining please do what we have in, in a retrospective is a company that's probably uh, investing the money it got from from its IPO so on and so forth 
but hasn't yet uh, started systematically to bring in the cash. So this appears in the free cash flow number. Yes, it's it's very interesting that in 2018, apparently, uh, they've posted by far the best number here in terms of free cash flow. But is this number uh, a sure thing to, to continue? You know, is this a trend? From the numbers, it's impossible to say, to, 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 to determine. So we have a choice here. Do we move laterally and we look at other companies or we try to investigate further in this company? And my choice is to, to move laterally here so that we find uh, companies that from these initial numbers here already look better. And, and then we investigate on those. So, And for, for QGP, we simply wait, continue learning, maybe the price drops by a dramatic amount and then we think about it again maybe the fun fundamentals start showing uh, better stuff and for some uh, extraneous reason the price is cheap uh, relative to that and then we act so that's it um, QGP in my opinion is between a no and a too hard. It doesn't matter. The ma the point is, I wouldn't be an investor in it at this point. So with that said, uh, I appreciate your viewership. And if you're still here and you're not a subscriber yet, please consider becoming one by tapping or clicking on the subscribe button. It's a very straightforward way to become a, subscribe a subscriber. Click on that button. Um, regardless of that, I do invite you to watch our past episodes. We do have 419 at this point. The earliest ones, I probably was a, a much worse uh, analyst, but I stopped and discussed the concepts far more. Now I want to believe I'm I'm more like a, I'm faster and I have corrected some very basic mistakes but then I don't discuss the concepts that much so think about that maybe look at the earliest ones maybe look at the latest ones and uh, I invite you to watch our future episodes as well uh, so if you have questions suggestions criticism and especially if you spot mistakes in the analyses please leave a message Leave a comment in the video, and I'll be delighted to write you back as soon as I'm able to. Meanwhile, uh, I hope to see you soon. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.